I'm going to try to win MVP with the worst player in the NHL. For every goal I score with our player, that's going to be worth two spins on the upgrade wheel, while an assist is only going to be worth one. So who do we have for the worst player in the NHL? That's going to be Ricky LaFleur, a 50 overall with AHL fourth line potential. Looking at his attributes, he's got 66s across the board, so that means he's got half a star in every single attribute category. And we're going to try to turn this man to an MVP. It's not going to be an easy task. But the first thing we got to do is spin a wheel to figure out which team Ricky LaFleur is joining, and he's actually joining a great situation in the Columbus Blue Jackets. The reason this is going to be a great situation is this team's entirely healthy. So in order to record the most points possible, I'm going to have Ricky LaFleur as our first, second, third, and fourth line right winger. So no matter what situation we're in, Ricky LaFleur is going to be getting some ice time. So for this matchup with Columbus, we're going to be taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning, and there's no particular reason for that. Nope, I selected this completely at random, and it just happened to land on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Pretty fitting if you ask me though. And for this video, I'm going to be playing on all-star difficulty, not superstar. And the reason for that, every single right winger I have is a 50 overall. So I want to give myself a chance in this video, and I feel like this is the least I can do for myself. Before we get into a game, a quick word from our sponsor. I want to give a big shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. SeatGeek is a ticket app that takes all the confusion out of buying tickets for your favorite events. On every single ticket, there's a rating so you know if you're getting a good or a bad deal. Of course, green's going to mean a good deal, and red, that's meaning bad. We're in the second half of the NHL season, and now's the best time to catch a game. And guys, I got a deal for you. If you use my code SOTI at checkout, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. That's code SOTI for $20 off your first purchase. And once again, thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I've done a few practice runs of this already. In the three practice runs I've done, I've scored three goals in total. I'm playing four on five constantly. This is a lot harder than you think. But in saying that, here we are just 40 seconds into the game. Goudreau, he's picking up the puck in the offensive zone. He's going to dish it over to Ricky Lafleur, and he's somehow burying this in the back of the net less than a minute into the game. This is the first goal I've ever scored with Ricky Lafleur. And trust me, I've played a handful of games. With our very first spin, we're actually getting the best upgrade possible, which is going to be plus 20 to his overall. So Ricky Lafleur, he's up to a 70 overall now. And with the 20 overall boost we're getting, the attributes we're upgrading is going to be all the shooting categories. Those are going to 99 and all the skating categories except for endurance, which is going to be setting at a 66. I also upgraded hand eye to a 99 and puck control up to an 84. Since Ricky LaFleur is scoring a goal, we're getting two spins and our second spin is going to be giving us maxing out one attribute category. With our second upgrade and allowing us to max out an attribute category, I'm going to go with defense here. So all four of those attributes in defensive awareness, face off, shot blocking, and stick checking, those are all going up to 99 and that's boosting Ricky LaFleur up to an 81 overall. Just a few minutes later, Later, Ricky's gonna get another fantastic chance. He's picking the puck up in the slot, but he's getting a weak backhander off, and really, we didn't have a great opportunity on that chance. And the chances for Ricky with Fleur, those are gonna continue. He's picking the puck up in the slot once again, but this play is gonna get broken up by a body check by Hedman. So I think the refs are being paid off by the Tampa Bay Lightning because how is this not a penalty? I didn't have control of the puck whatsoever and I'm getting absolutely lit up. They don't want to see Ricky LaFleur succeed out here. With 8 minutes left in the period, Ricky LaFleur is bringing the puck into the zone but he's going to get checked against the boards. Cole Stone just picking this one up behind the net and he's going to dish it over to Jacob Voracek who's burying it in the back of the net. And just like that, Ricky LaFleur is not only picking up his second point of the game but he's also picking up his second point of the period. I would have never been able to predict the success of Ricky LaFleur like this. So I have no clue how we're on our third spin and we're still only in the first period but we're getting another great upgrade in plus 20 to 10 attributes. With our third upgrade of plus 20 to 10 attribute categories, Ricky LaFleur is becoming an absolute beast. He's now got four stars in puck skills, three and a half in senses, five in shooting, five in defense, five in skating, and three and a half in physical. And with those type of attributes, Ricky LaFleur is going to be sitting at a 93 overall, and he's got franchise potential now. Somehow the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to keep pushing. Ricky LaFleur is driving right to the front of the net, but Vasilevsky, he's making an absolutely incredible save robbing Ricky. He could have had his second goal of the game and a bunch more upgrades. Columbus is going to be getting another fantastic chance a few moments later, but Rensky, he's not going to be able to get the pass off to Ricky who's in front of the net. And although this play doesn't involve Ricky at all, I just gotta highlight Vasilevsky making another incredible save here. Kent Johnson had a wide open net, but Vasilevsky, he's gonna stone him cold. And with the first period coming to an end, honestly, I'm incredibly surprised with how smoothly this video has been going. The fact that we're up 2-0 right now and Ricky LaFleur has already picked up two points is incredible to me. Also, before we get into the second period, if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you can be notified when I upload. So things have been going way too smoothly for the Columbus Blue Jackets. There's no reason why we should be up 2-0 right now. So brain point, he's gonna be be putting one in the back of the net and he's getting Tampa within one goal. Right off the faceoff, Columbus is going right back to work and Ricky LaFleur, he's looking for another goal. He's driving straight to the front of the net. He's going to get a one-timer off, but Vasilevsky, like usual, he's making the big save. And things are going to go from bad to worse real quick because moments later, Kalorn, he's going to be tying this game up at two. Let's be completely honest with ourselves here. It was only a matter of time before Tampa tied this game up. And the fact that at one point we are leading is incredibly surprising to me still. Similar to the last time Tampa scored, Columbus is going to be responding real quick. Gavrikov's going to be bringing the puck into the zone and somehow he's getting past the defender. 
he's dishing it over to Kent Johnson, who had a wide open backhand, but Vasilevsky's making the save. And that's a tough one because Ricky Lafleur, he would have been picking up a secondary assist there. The Columbus Blue Jackets continue to push, and of course, it's Ricky Lafleur leading the way. He's bringing the puck into the zone. He's keeping control of the puck. He's going to try to go far side on Vasilevsky, but he's going to end up hitting the defenseman in the process. There was another fantastic chance for Ricky Lafleur to be picking up a secondary assist. Nyquist is going to dish it over to Boone Jenner, who's going to tee one up, but Vasilevsky, he's going to make the glove save like usual. Out of all the teams I could have chose, why did I choose Tampa Bay? I should have just chose a team that doesn't have a goaltender like the Arizona Coyotes or the St. Louis Blues. It would have been way easier to score. One thing you got to know about Ricky Lafleur is he's willing to put his body on the line and he gets absolutely crunched into the boards, but he's going to pass over to Johnson first. And then line A, he's going to have a fantastic chance, but Vasilevsky, he's going to make the acrobatic save, keeping this puck out of the net. And how could this play get any worse? Well, Tampa's going to skate down the length of the ice and then they're going to put one in the back of the net for the third goal of the period. And now Columbus is down three to two. Things are falling apart real quick. Entering the third period, we got to get Ricky Lafleur involved in the offense a bit more. We got to give him some more opportunities to pick up some points, but I don't think that's going to be happening. The third period was incredibly slow for us, and it just involved Ricky Lafleur getting rocked a ton. This man couldn't get anything going with the offense, and we were in our defensive zone for most of the period. With seven minutes left in the period, this was one of our best opportunities as Nyquist. He's going to try to get a backhander past Vasilevsky. That's going to be an easy save for him. And just seconds later, after regaining control of the puck in the corner, Nyquist is going to try to tuck this one behind Vasilevsky, but to our surprise, he's making the save. Who would have seen that one coming? And with less than 30 seconds left in the game, this is going to be our last opportunity, but Ricky Lafleur, he's going to have the puck poked away from him, and that's going to end the game for us. So I think Ricky's got a fantastic chance of winning an MVP this season. He's going to be on the first line with Johnny Goudreau and Boo Jenner. So by having an elite playmaker like Johnny Hockey on your first line, that's going to be helping Ricky a ton. Looking at the defense, Zach Rensky, he's back and healthy, and he's ready to lead the way. Well, in between the pipes, we got Merzlikens and Corpusello, and I know they can hold it down for us. So it's time to go ahead and simulate through the entire season, see how the Columbus Blue Jackets are doing, see if they can win a cup, and then we'll see if Ricky Lafleur can become the next MVP. When the season came to an end, Columbus is looking fantastic. They're finishing fourth in the entire league with a 49-28-5 record, while Ricky Lafleur, he's going to be second on the team in scoring, but he's picking up 67 goals and 32 assists for 99 points. Although Johnny Goudreau is picking up five more points than us, I don't think that should stop him from winning MVP over Ricky Lafleur. Ricky potted 67 goals this season. When was the last time someone potted 67 goals? You can easily tell he's the most valuable player to this team and to the league. But he's having some tough competition from Colorado as Nathan McKinnon, he's going to lead the entire league with 119 points, consisting of 47 goals and 70 helpers. Although Nathan McKinnon's picking up 20 more points than Ricky Lafleur, Ricky's picking up 18 more goals than him, so I'm thinking this is going to be a close race for MVP. And Darcy Camper, we got to give a shout out to him. He's picking up 46 wins with a 917 save percentage and a 250 goals against. In the postseason, Columbus is going to completely fold because they're a poverty franchise and they're going to fall in the first round in five games to the Carolina Hurricanes. And I'm kidding about them being a poverty franchise. I can't say anything. St. Louis looks abysmal right now. You guys at least have a reason to be bad. Your entire team's hurt. In the most important games of the season, Ricky Lafleur's folding, picking up only two goals in five games for two points. He took 33 shots in five games, but only picked up two goals. Ricky, I'm expecting more from you, my guy. You disappointed me. So taking a look at the awards, of course, Ricky Lafleur, he's going to be winning the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy. We already knew that, but is he taking home MVP? No, Nathan McKinnon's going to rob it from him. Ricky Lafleur was robbed. He rightfully earned the MVP. They're hating on Ricky and they're hating on the Columbus Blue Jackets. This is just pure disrespect to one of the greatest to ever touch the ice.